This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to Human Human Architecture here on Think Tech Hawaii. And today we're broadcasting here again from our retirement paradise of Honolulu, Hawaii. And there's probably no other place that is so popular for people uh, thinking spending the, the autumn, the fall of their life, because we're so uh, privileged, the um, climatically uh, temperate here. So, uh, so we want to talk how architecture can have an impact in that. Uh, so aging and architecture. And our very special guest for that is David Liang. Thank you, David, for being here. Thank you for having me. And the audience might not be surprised in saying, well, you know, is he really aged? <laughs> 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 and uh, you are, <laughs> and, uh, but not in a traditional sense. But you are an expert in that topic, because um, why don't we bring up picture number one here, and um, you explain what that was and what that is, what we were doing there. Right, so what you see in the picture right now is me and my fellow classmates doing an XP day. And what an XP day is basically um, our, me and my fellow classmates along with our professor, um, Martin Despang, we go explore um, sites, different buildings, and study them um, through like social, politically, um, and uh, economic effects and then um, sort of take that as inspiration into our own designs. Mm -hmm. And you're in charge of that. So you basically, this day was basically looking at senior housing. And then shame on me, I got the address wrong. So I ended up going here first, which we then returned to, which is when I took this picture here. And it was rather irritated, I have to say, because thinking, why would we want to look at that building? Which uh, I drove by and I saw a van pulling by and and sort of, uh, picking all these pretty phlegmatically looking people up and I just thought okay I don't want to end up like that not that I would ever do that because you guys quickly uh, looked up what they charge here and it was like in the 5,000 range which in a pre-discussion we had with Jay was like oh that's cheap but uh, <laughs> never mind it's all relative in paradise I guess so if you go to the next picture uh, there's another project just across the street uh, on the other side of Kapolyani Boulevard, uh, another uh, just recently completed senior housing project. I'm referring to that one because the Soto and I had that in the previous show. We were talking about balconies here, and this was one of the silly examples where these very sort of extravagant lids have no other purpose than sheltering the single wall unit AC, and you wouldn't think you would do that these days anymore. And especially do you want to be stuck and basically warehoused away as a senior uh, behind these in, when you're living in Hawaii. That's what we were sort of discussing. So luckily, that wasn't what you choose. And you were actually more specifically in charge and made yourself in charge of this specific XP day. And if we could get the next picture, where did you take us? Right, so I took um, me and my classmates to my grandmother's senior housing in Kalakaua um, Homes. Um, immediately when I was thinking of XP Day, I thought of um, we were doing a project in uh, High Rise. Um, and so I was thinking something along the lines of Easy Breezy because Martin Bang really loves talking about Easy Breezy. And so I thought what a great idea to take them to my grandmother's senior housing because uh, even at a young age when I ran through the hallways when my grandma kind of like took care of me, mm -hmm. um, I always remember that throughout the years I never experienced that they had any ACs or any you know, modern uh, like amenities uh, mm -hmm. that we see in a lot of build buildings now. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is just um, it's using natural ventilation, using like the surrounding environment, natural surrounding environment, mm -hmm. environment like resources. Mm -hmm. And you shared it with us, thankfully. And the next picture is we walk you guys through now how we walk through the building. So we started out going through the lobby, and whereas in the other newer project, there are the inclusive ones and, and high end ones where the people were like phlegmatically sitting there waiting to be taken care of. Here I thought I'm like in a junior high school because there was this ping pong tournament going on of the residents and they were going crazy. So that was an awesome welcoming to begin with. And then we walked up and this is here. And we, although you know many of the seniors don't necessarily all take the stairs, there is an elevator, but 
right. at least we still have an easy breezy, thank you, uh, <laughs> referring to the term, uh, stairway here, which our fellow host, uh, Howard Wig, our hero, is uh, allowing us to do again because we, he just made sure that code got changed so they don't need to be enclosed, which I used to be under the invasive uh, international building code, the IBC. So we walk up uh, to then having that view in the next picture. And that's pretty much like a multi-million dollar view, right? You can't beat that. I mean, this is, this is what probably all the Howard uses and Kamehameha School would love to advertise with and saying mm -hmm. you got the view to the ocean and to Diamond Head, as you can see here. But in fact, uh, where we're standing and looking at, we see on the next picture, and explain a little bit what, what's behind what we see here, David. So what you see behind is sort of um, my little, uh, well, my grandma's little space that she sort of makes her own. So sort of see a place where she can comfortably sit, but not sort of uh, intersect into the main circulation hallway that's in front of the, um, each individual units mm -hmm. because um, this entire building is single loaded corridor. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, so the architect had designed that, had planned that because once you start pulling furniture into the, uh, into the existing uh, circulation, you get in trouble with the fire marshal because it's a fire hazard. So the architect basically designed these alcoves, these niches, and they become sort of the front yard uh, of your individual unit, which the next picture shows even more, I guess, uh, um, excessively, as another neighbor here was literally, you know, having, uh, where you take the shoes off, but they also cultivate a lot of uh, vegetation, and some grow their herbs and their little vegetables, and just literally make it their, their front yard, which is usually something we associate with single family, Typology. Right. So this architect brought that into the multi-story, which is rather interesting. And then uh, behind these jealousies, we basically walk right into the main space, which is the dwelling space. And the next picture, please explain a little bit this warm, very warm hospitality of your grandmother. <laughs> she welcomed us with cookies and um ice glasses of water, because it was a pretty hot day on that day. Mm -hmm. And so she sort of gave us a tour of um, what uh, each unit looks kind of like. So uh, what you see in the picture is basically the usual floor plan, um, or what each unit looks like inside. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty modest if you look at it. It's not too large and it's not too small. It's mm -hmm. comfortable. Mm -hmm. So pretty much where she was preparing the food is behind us at the very behind the bottom picture. This is where the open kitchen is pretty much. Mm -hmm. And to the right, you can see we can go to the next picture. We're standing sort of in this open hallway or just this opening between uh, behind is the bedroom. And you can see, why don't you explain a little bit the feature of that wall? So that wall is actually a closet, um, but it's not... It doesn't reach all the way to the roof, so it doesn't cut off like natural um, circulation from reaching all the way behind into the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And so there's a one continuous circulation. So no matter where you are at in the unit, it always feels um, you know well breathed, so mm -hmm. you don't feel too hot. Mm -hmm. um, Amazing. Why don't we do this again these days? You got to wonder. So the next picture is another feature of this. Really, what you're saying is the very sort of bioclimatic design. And uh, so she introduced us to the fenestration on the Malka side, which is facing northeast, where our prevailing trade winds come from. So the next picture, why don't you explain a little bit how that, how that window works? So um, underneath these windows are sort of these uh, dips um, that sort of like funnel the wind upwards instead of having natural um, like regular straight ventilation through windows, mm -hmm. it's actually being scooped up into mm -hmm. the um, mm -hmm. So the horizontal sort of wind and rain gets kept out while the breeze gets welcomed in, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a very sort of cleverly, very tropically engineered. Uh, Scott Wilson, who just talked to me the other day, uh, basically said we should get Woha here, who is the most cutting edge easy breezy skyscraper firm in the world and they're, they're out of Singapore 
and they just reinvented that that sort of window. But we have it here. So I, I said to 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 uh, Scott, why do we need to bring Walha here? Why we have us and you guys, the emerging generation? You can do that just as well, probably better because you are from here, and certain things are different here than in Singapore, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, but it even gets better as far as bioclimatic performance of the building, which the next picture shows. And what what is that? So this is the washroom that's attached to the bathroom in each unit, um, which makes this um, particular apartment unique because, um, as my grandma sort of quoted, um, that she's never seen it in any other senior housing. Um, this is only one of the only mm -hmm. units that she's seen that mm -hmm. has this. So pretty much behind us is basically the bathroom, and the bathroom has sort of this additional space where it has a sink, so you can do whatever other cleaning you want to do. This is basically your your sort of facility room. Or you which, can hang clothes. Yeah, you, you can do that. And the next picture is what we already see on this one here is basically you can dry your laundry, right? Mm -hmm. And if you think about this in sort of a multiple ways, I mean, the, the basically the, the laundry dryers are the biggest energy hogs overall. Mm -hmm. And here it uses the most natural and free because we're going to basically talk about price of this, because if you would like all brand and sell this, this could be multi, I mean, this could be high luxury, mostly exclusive housing with all the features, right? It's healthy and makes you happy. And, but, but this is, this is social senior housing. So this is all sort of out of sort of the necessity of, um, you know, having to make it work with the least um, cost in, probably building the building, but also maintaining the building and your maintenance fees, because we all know that these condos have the big problem that the maintenance fees then finally eats up all your savings. And that's with old people especially that mostly have the chance to somehow own a single family house, but some, I think, including your grandma, never had that chance. But mm -hmm. even if you had one, that can be eaten up so fast by these horrendous kind of fees that these buildings have. So. So this building really tries to keep the systems down and basically use all um, natural systems, right? Mm -hmm. But what if um, you're not, maybe basically, you don't want to do your laundry yourself. Um, we go to the next picture. Where can you go then, David? So this is um, actually located on the uh, penthouse, or I believe the 20th floor, mm -hmm. the very top floor, and it's basically a laundry room. So sort of typically on the top floor, the penthouse is usually where we have the most expensive unit. Mm -hmm. But in this case, they're using this um, as like a community space. Mm -hmm. So they're really thinking about the um, community first, the people first that are living there. Mm -hmm. Having a laundry room space, and adjacent to the um, laundry mat is an actual open community space that they can use for mm -hmm. anything. Can we have that next picture that illustrates that? Right. Yeah. So this is the adjacent um, space um, that my grandma has said that um, sometimes they have people going there to sort of learn dancing, or um, some people have actually gone there to just hang clothes. Um, but the windows that you see there currently actually weren't there originally. They were only recently placed in. Mm -hmm. They had the more traditional jealousies, and then we were told that these here are a little bit more storm resistant. But I really think your point is well taken that you say this is the opposite to the current developments, which are all high end, all exclusive. And the higher you go, the more expensive it gets. Mm -hmm. So the richest guy gets the penthouse, you even use the term. And this is a very sort of socialist approach, to say the least, where you say, you know, this is for everyone, right? It's a very, I mean, a more moderate way would be to say this is a democratic way, because if you just basically are exclusive and you only have it for the rich, and the richer you are, the more you go up, this is very, very sort of non-democratic, at least in my understanding. So that's, that's great that um, it's for everyone and they got the, they got the multi-million dollar views without paying multi-million dollar uh, rents. And, we're not exactly sure uh, we, we, we talked about, but you said the, the, you don't know the exact rent, but they're rather moderate, right? They're moderate right. in the range of a thousand or something, a little bit more or less. It's based off a percentage of your income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's still a low income housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so talking amenities and um, talking about the facility obviously being sort of 
Talking Aging, it's a dated facility. It was built in 1969. Mm -hmm. But we can certainly say it aged well. And, and you want to maybe talk to that a little bit, how it's sort of been uh, you know, upkept and, and certainly adapted to you know, people moving in. And, and the, the next picture is, is a good illustration because they're also adding things, right? So what is this we're looking at? Um, so what you're looking at right now is a uh, community garden. Um, that was recently uh, been placed in a parking lot that's like right behind the um, senior housing. Mm -hmm. So originally that wasn't there, but recently they placed that in, um, I guess because the parking wasn't being used as much. Mm -hmm. And so each lot is actually designated to um, different units. So mm -hmm. it sort of gives incentives to each unit to sort of have their own space to grow their own greens and, you know, try to like revive the community, mm -hmm. their sense of community in mm -hmm. the place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that gets us to the next picture, which is also um, uh, a shared space that we discovered on our way out. W what is that? So as we were passing by this, um, above, there was a door, and a, right above it, interestingly said, auditorium. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this space at that time was being used to sort of teach dance. Um, it seemed like it wasn't only just restricted for seniors, but it's open to just the general public, because there was a wide range of ages in there. Mm -hmm. So once again, this seemed to me more like high school kids, you know, prepping for prom night, <laughs> <laughs> because it's really sort of, you know, active and, um, and vital, and not at all like sort of the stereotypical prejudice you have, you know, against or about senior housing where it says, okay, these are people who are at the end of their life and they're like checked out and locked away, unfortunately. So I think the, the current sort of um, businesses take advantage of that and, and basically sort of make people needing care and then they can basically sort of charge. And so it's their self-interest to make people like old or feel like old, where here it seems the opposite, that the building is basically trying to keep people engaged and your grandmother has lived in it for how long approximately approximately about 17 years mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so yeah definitely what i liked about um this building is because in a lot of like new senior housing you know you're seeing like these very extravagant like amenities you know mm -hmm. like uh just like a restaurant or but these a lot of these like um spaces are just you know luxury things and mm -hmm. they don't tend to the basic needs that seniors like want you know they, they want to like feel involved, you know, they want a sense of community because a lot of times they might end up, you know, living by themselves and they still want to still feel young, still try to like feel independent. And mm -hmm. that's what my grandma senior housing does. It's, you know, reviving the community. It's really uh, giving a place where they can feel independent and young. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And another aspect that contributes to that shows us the next picture here because you also shared with us that your mother lives in a very disciplined way. She's, she lives on a strict sort of a diet that she has brought from her uh, culture, right. from elsewhere, right? So she's exotic herself, so she brings something from somewhere else that complements because she's not becoming also a burden to society and, you know, uh, and, and because she keeps herself up and, and, and stays healthy because of her rigid way of living, right? That's, um, that and also because my grandma has a heart condition, mm -hmm. but I mean, she, I've always known her to sort of live to that strict diet, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. always waking up at 5 or 6 a.m., you know, waking up to um, pray and then going down to, um, what you see in that picture, like the backyard garden where, you know, she does um, her morning walks um, to really get those joints, you know, and muscles working mm -hmm. and then going back up and then, you know, sort of cleaning the house and doing the yeah. daily chores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And here, once again, the, the landscape around the building is conducive of these activities because it's very lushly vegetated and shaded. Mm -hmm. So she isn't out in the sun and beaten down, which probably you sort of drain her. So it's, it's very sort of, yeah, it's very well designed uh, all the way around. Um, it's a very organic building that, um, you know, lives and it allows people to have a le happy life in it. And if we go to the next picture, we had an interesting discussion here up front. We were running into our founding father, Jay, and Tim Apicella, and had a little chit-chat. And you want to share a little bit about the content of that? So um, what we were discussing earlier um, with Jay, um, Jay did mention that uh, this 
building was very huge and monumental in scale. And uh, I agreed it to be as true if you were thinking, when I was thinking back in the days when I was younger and didn't understand the true value of this building. Mm -hmm. When you do look at it, you know, apart from its surrounding buildings, sure, yes, it does look very monumental. But then when you sort of like walk closer and, you know, look at each individual units and seeing how modest they are, and it's just like the small little details, it really changes your perspective of the overall building as a whole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with that, sort of also speaking to Doko Momo, it's certainly a, a prime piece of uh, mid-century modern exotic architecture because again Frank Slavsky is the architect mm -hmm. as Don Hibbert you know taught us you know um, was um, was from the mainland he grew up in Denver and went to Berkeley to school and, and came here like many of these architects uh, somewhere in the first part of the last uh, century and then worked for the military and he started his office in the early 50s so but he came here certainly informed and inspired by international style, certainly by Le Corbusier and by people like that, Unité d'Habitation, the living machine. There's many analogies. Mm -hmm. But he twisted it to, to a tropical extent. And maybe you want to talk about that little detail here that we see. Um, so this little detail, especially on the on picture on the right, um, right now they have these uh, glass panel railings. Um, but before that, they had um, actual metal bars for railings. Mm -hmm. So it actually allowed uh, natural ventilation to go mm -hmm. through. And mm -hmm. again, this is um, showing how they had that under scoop um, to funnel the wind upwards. But then on top, um, there's a actual another like overhang scoop that sort of flows that wind into, into each individual mm -hmm. unit. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So it's, it's very much designed you know, with nature as an advisor. And that way, probably sort of this the gesture, the kind of the gently curving and swooping curve of these of these panels make it look sort of more lofty and, and less sort of, you know, stiff and, and rigid. So but it doesn't come from a superficial like we see at many, you know, pieces of architecture nowadays where it's decorative and it's added on. And it's the soda keeps calling it basically ornamental, where you throw on sort of floral pattern that have their postmodern uh, perception. But this one here is sort of designed to perform. And we can say just like nature is designed to perform bioclimatically, it's a prime example. So basically then also looks pleasant and gentle because it's just respecting the, the principles and, and, and practices of, of nature pretty well. So um, we come surely about close uh, to the end of the show. We want to sort of phase out here with some sort of polemic uh, propaganda and some uh, sort of food for thought. And so the next picture is going back to the beginning because this is the sort of, you know, to us shocking because of all the reasons said where you so much, you know, we're honoring your grandma's plays, all these things don't apply to this one here. It's almost like it's the opposite of it in all its parts. It's hermetic, it's exclusive, it's expensive. You got these glitzy restaurants and shops, but what is it good for the old people? You know, can they afford it? And right. is it more for someone else to show off? Oh, I'm mixed use or something like that, which is that sort of fancy word they're using these days. So I used, um, uh, this is a picture I, I took uh, when it was under construction. So let's just make a little sort of uh, mind game here and, and think about how we could reverse time. And since the crane is still here, let's use the crane basically to undo what they have done and sort of, there you go, to deassemble the building and it would look like that. <laughs> and wouldn't that be what you just, you know, quoted easy breezy? I mean, this would be, it protects you from the elements, from the rain, from the wind. Right. Certainly some screens, you know, for privacy and certain wind protection that we're actually going to have a show with our co-teacher of our current studio, Professor David Rockwood, ran a class about screens and will share that with us so you can have something certainly to infill. But, and, and also um, maybe you want to refer, to, um, as far as technology and the way they built that, maybe you want to refer to another XP day that we had together. We went to the people who made that. Which one is uh, that? Out in Kapolei. Oh, um, 
I can't quite remember that one. Great Pacific, yeah. Oh, right, so, yes. So Great um, Pacific. Um, yeah. We were able to visit um, that place. Uh, and they showed us a few projects that they worked on. Um, can you quite remember the project that they Well, they, yeah. they made, if we go back to that slide, they, they were the contractor uh, of, of this structure. So if you strip off that extra makeup, and, and you know, I'm allowing myself that reference too, because when I saw your granny, she looked so healthy and just natural, and there's, you know, a little little makeup on, she doesn't need it because she's healthy. Whereas the, the people in this building all looked like really old and they needed to be covered up with lots of makeup. So it's really like, it tells. And so, um, you know, reversing that, Martin, let's face, is probably not gonna happen. But what this polemically tries to say, and what I'm saying here is Grace Pacific was making that, so we should uh, basically consult them and have them work on new projects. And the, the next picture is a project that we have been promoting in the show. This is Primitiva here, which is pretty much everything you talked about is pretty much infused in, in Primitiva. Um, all the whistles and bells of bioclimatic and socially um, sort of promoting design. However, next picture, a Primitiva is 21st century and your grandma's place is from the 20th century. They're both sort of taking different takes on it here. We organized life in a circular way to be more socially conducive. And there's another granny there, at least that's what she's supposed to be, that lady on the left with the white hair, who is just sitting there and enjoying the kids. And, and again, just to make clear, maybe we weren't specific enough, but you basically partly grew up in the building you just showed us today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it wasn't, and your, your, your grandma, as I understood, smuggled you in. It wasn't generally <laughs> allowed, but she, found a way, yeah. and, and you had a pretty happy childhood, just roaming the corridors and, and just you know, having your fun in the building. So um, with that, uh, with the next and last picture, uh, let's uh, thank, first and foremost, your grandma of having uh, you know, shown us her, her building, her pretty amazing, uh, inclusive, easy breezy senior mm -hmm. dwelling. Um, that she really appreciates. And as one can see, she's a happy and healthy person. Thank you for having been here today, speaking on be behalf of her, obviously, as well, but also from your own perspective. And let's thank Fran Slotsky, who is the architect, who, uh, and let's sort of, let's think about to work in his tradition and evolve that kind of thinking that we can keep this very beautiful place, paradise, also for the people who are not necessarily the richest, but still have a place here and call this their home and deserve to sort of dwell in, in dignity and decency. So with that, thank you very much again for having been here. Thank you for having me. Uh, much appreciated. And with that, I uh, hope you all enjoyed. And so please um, keep our tropical paradise uh, inclusive. And we hope to see you next week for another episode of Learning from the Past for the Future with DeSoto Brown. And we talk about a very eruptive uh, topic which has to do with volcanic nature. So see you then, bye bye. <laughs>